Let's head over to London now and check in with Gwen Baumgartner standing by. You're looking at a few stories uh, for us that are happening in around around the world. But, uh, you know, we talked a little bit yesterday about um, s s Russia and Turkey meeting to talk about what is happening in Syria, particularly northeast Syria. And it looks like now they may have ham hammered out a little bit of a ceasefire. They did. Good morning, Anne-Marie. They reached an agreement that hopes to end the years of deadly fighting in Syria, with Russian forces backing the Syrian government and Turkish forces supporting Syrian rebels. The United Nations says the continued fighting in Syria may be, quote, the worst humanitarian crisis yet, killing thousands and displacing millions of people, making this agreement so crucial. The countries agreed to begin the ceasefire this morning, as well as work together to establish a safety corridor and joint patrols in the region. Many hope the new agreement will hold, unlike a similar ceasefire deal between Russia and Turkey two years ago. Now to Israel, where for the third time in less than a year, Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu has failed to form a government. While he was able to retain his leadership seat, if Netanyahu isn't able to form a coalition, another election will be triggered. His party fell just three seats short as Israeli voters remain unable to elect a majority party. Now, the prime minister must persuade at least three lawmakers to change party affiliation. Otherwise, the country will head back to the polls. Meanwhile, Netanyahu is facing corruption charges and will head to trial in two weeks. And finally, here in London, where a court ruling revealed some shocking allegations against the ruler of Dubai. After an eight-month investigation, a court ruled that Sheikh Mohammed Al Maktoum orchestrated abduction, torture and imprisonment of two of his daughters. One of those daughters hasn't been seen publicly in several years. Sheikh Mohammed launched legal action last year against his ex-wife, who fled to London with their two children. The Sheikh, who's also the prime minister of the UAE, denies the allegations and attempted to keep this week's ruling out of the public. Now, obviously, that didn't happen. But Anne-Marie, it is unclear what will happen next, because while the judge ruled that these crimes took place, there weren't any formal charges brought against the Sheikh. However, human rights groups are calling for charges to be brought forward because the UK does have an extradition treaty with the UAE. That is a bizarre story, Gwen. Thank you so much. Thank you.